This episode of More Stories with the great Greg Proops is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook, free audiobook of your choice and a 30-day trial, go to audiblepodcast.com slash J. I just read Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian, and I got my free download from audiblepodcast.com slash J. You do it too. Every dollar counts when you're running a small business. You can't just throw money away, but that's exactly what you're doing. If you're leasing one of those expensive postage meters, don't do it. Long-term commitments, maintenance, and reset fees. Expensive ink. It's crazy. I know a better way for you to do your mailing and shipping. Use stamps.com. With stamps.com, get all the benefits of a postage meter and more at a fraction of the cost. Just use your own computer and printer to get official U.S. postage for any envelope, any package, any class of mail. Plus, no more time-consuming trips to the post office. Everything you would do at the post office, do from your desk with Stamps.com. I use Stamps.com for more stories, and I want you to use it too. Right now, use my last name, M-O-H-R. More for this special offer. It's a no-risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer. That includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com right now before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in more, M-O-H-R. That's stamps.com. Enter more. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game tree. Don't nuts. If you want to battle with either that you will that you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking but you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man! Oh, my friends, we're well into the 200s on more stories. Don't forget to click that Amazon ad. Greg Proops in the house. Get close to the mic, sweetheart. Hello, everybody. You can pull your chair closer. I will. I will. I'm going to lunge for a while, though. I'm going to Ziggy Sardust this for the first few minutes. I like that. That's a hipper reference. I was going to do the guy at the end of uh, Price is Right that leans all the way forward to go $1. Yeah. Yeah, When he knows he's got a nail. Yeah. Lower. (laughs) What? Uh, if you want to, uh, a lot, I get a lot of tweets from people saying like, Hey, should I use this guy's Amazon banner or your Amazon banner? And I never, uh, I just don't answer cause I'm not going to tell people where to go because we're all podcast brethren. Greg Proops, of course, we smartest are. man in the world podcast, which I listened to extensively on my Hawaiian vacation. That's very gratifying, Jay. Laying in the sun, listening to you in Oslo. Oslo. Oh, my God. It and is then, Oslo. I keep saying Oslo, but it's Oslo, I believe. And uh, I said to my wife, listening to uh, the smartest man in the world po- podcast, laying on the beach in Honolulu, is life's most sublime pleasure. <laughs> to which she replied, listening to it in a dank fucking cave with scurvy would be one of life's. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Yeah. I'm using that on my next show. I do. Please say, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay said, laying in the sun in Hawaii is a sublime pleasure. In, in a dank cave with scurvy. Yeah. That's still the sublime. Rats gnawing at you. It's so much fun, your podcast. Well, thank you. And I'm amazed. You, I said it off mic, but I'll say it on mic. You impressed the heck out of me because I don't know many comics. I can go to like Edinburgh, Oslo, and then like just take it home to West Hollywood across from the pleasure chest. And like no matter yeah. where you are, you draw this <laughs> crowd of people that are complete diehard you know, smartest man in the world podcast fans. And anybody listening, there's an app. There's a smartest man in the world podcast app. And I'm telling you, it, it is so much fun. The ranch you go on, you ramble. It's like a river with many bends. You always circle oh, yeah. back around. I love it. And I get – and here, here – okay, this will probably be – this is the biggest compliment I could give for my personal uh, ego to you to go share. On. I'm ready to accept a compliment. I actually – and I'm, this is not bullshit. I'm actually smarter after I listen to your podcast because you're – I'm being serious because of your references and your, your knowledge of history and stuff. But it's all completely funny and goofy all the time. Yeah. And, but then you get super heavy and like yeah. you, you'll read like poetry on stage <laughs> and you broke down like the Fourth Amendment and people's rights and stuff right. uh, to attract your right-wing faithful. <laughs> Uh, so if you're out there listening and then we're going to get to Mr. Proops in about five seconds, uh, which Amazon banner you should use, 
Uh, it's your life. Use whichever one you want. But I will say this, and Proops, you'll like this. I worked out a deal. This is for the listeners, a little special announcement. If you use all the money from my uh, Amazon kickback that I get, uh, you go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, buy whatever you want, email me what you bought, and then I will read your uh, purchase on the air with a lovely guest. I, it all goes to my son's college fund. Oh, fantastic. So some of the guys might want to buy a motorcycle mm-hmm. or a Vespa. I'm actually putting it to a kid's education so that that helps sway your decision as to whose banner to use. Know that you might be putting a kid through college. That's a very noble endeavor. Uh, no, Yeah, but also I get to, it's also selfish. I get to keep money for myself to go to Hawaii. We're, that's why we're advertising on the shows because we don't make any money doing these things. No, we don't. No. We need you to buy things for yourself. Check this guy out. Uh, Kevin Blanchard. Yeah, you, buddy. Kevin Blanchard. Hey, Jay Moores. It's always a little Tracy Morgan in there. They always love it. Hey, Jay Moores. I uh, love the podcast. You make my Mondays better. Uh, unfortunately, I've been spending months forgetting about your Amazon banner at jaymore.com, even as I buy all kinds of shit with my Amazon Prime membership. Sorry about that. But today, I finally remembered and made some purchases. I got a set of Panasonic headphones for my niece's 10th birthday so she doesn't drive my sister nuts playing Minecraft all damn day. Language. I also got some replacement razor heads for my body shaver to keep my junk trimmed so my girlfriend will keep going down on me. That's a lot of information. Yeah, I don't know if you want to mix a uh, 10-year-old niece no. and girl. <laughs> I'd separate that with a paragraph. Something, yeah. Something on a, or, yeah. Yeah. On a side note, yeah, I yeah. also purchased yeah. P.S. a pa- yeah, P. Oh, by <laughs> the way, if you're so inclined to yeah. read this as well, yeah. Panasonic headphones, uh, no, sorry, uh, replacement razor heads for my body shaver to keep my junk trim so my girlfriend would keep going down on me. Felt good to finally contribute. I bet. Felt good to finally contribute a little something to my favorite podcast. Keep the laughs coming, bro. Put your name on it. Uh, Sounds like everybody was giving. Everybody. Does it really ma- Do you have to be... You're a happily married man like myself. Do you have to uh, have a certain... Do you no. have to edge along the driveway in order to get uh, carnal pleasure well, from your bride? I do simple courtesy, but it's not a big event in my life or anything. I don't light a candle and lay in the tub or anything. <laughs> You know, smother myself with emollients and read from a book out loud. Myrrh. Air a lot of myrrh. Yeah, a lot of myrrh in the air. <laughs> in the <laughs> Intoxicating. Yeah. <You're laughs> no, like, I don't. I don't. Do I smell myrrh? Oh, Greg, you've done it again. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I didn't, yeah. I don't know about the shaving thing. I, I'm, I'm a little old to do that, I think. I you think get to you that need... Ron Jeremy level of age and there's too much pooching. <laughs> <laughs> do you, once I shaved completely... Really? And it looked it looked almost exactly like a rubber chicken. Yeah, right. It's and it was disc- it was it was horrible. It yeah. only looks good on like porno guys right. with eight, with eighteen packs. Yeah, yeah. Who are built just for that? Right, right, right. But I for Kevin Blanchard, maybe uh, if you have to trim in order for your girlfriend to do that, maybe uh, you know I'm not going to say anything. But no, no, you got to do what you have to do. Oh, you know what? Fair, look at see. That's why you got to listen to Smartest Man in the World podcast. Do what you have to do. If that's what it's going to take, you got to trim a little bit, though. Right? I do. You, you, you don't do just that. you don't just let it go. I man. use the same scissors. Uh, to trim my <laughs> oh, pubes no. as I do to cut chicken and uh, cut uh, dog shit out of the back of my dog's such a coincidence. ass hair. And I just yeah. wash the scissors and I put them back in the rack because yeah. I'm a savage beast. <laughs> uh, so that's you, Kevin Blanchard. You're, uh, you're more stories famous. And thank you, brother. And anybody out there, if you're wondering, which one should I use? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to put a kid through uh, college. That would be good. You know what we should tell this guy? Forget the razor trimmer. If you really want the best shave of your life, let me tell you this, Greg Proops. Yes. I will never endorse something I don't personally use. I've turned down uh, several. Several. Dollarshaveclub.com. Really? You heard of it? No. Really? No. Brother, how many times do you shave every day? I do, yes. Are you hirsute? I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm pale. Isn't it weird hirsute isn't spelt hair suit? No, why isn't it? I've never understood that. I it don't should, know the derivation right? of hirsute. But it should be like a hair. I'm a right. hair suit man, right? Not a her suit man. The fuck is her suit? I shave most of the time on this. You know, on the week, I didn't shave today. Obviously, I just realized that. So, so you're. But I know we weren't going to be on video tonight. No, there's no video here. I don't like looking all scruffy on video. No, and nor should you. No, especially when you're auditioning for Rock and Roll Jeopardy, and <laughs> which we'll get to that. <laughs> DollarShaveClub.com, uh, my friends. Uh, these are the best razors, uh, seriously, that I've ever used. Uh, I got out of the shower this morning. I was rushed to go to work, and uh, I didn't even use uh, lather. No shaving cream, nothing, just right. with a hot 
face and wet. Boom. I just still did it, and they're great. For a couple bucks a month, DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing quality razors. They deliver them to your door. You don't have to go to the drugstore for a pack of blades, and you got to get that, that guy at the place. Could you unlock the razors? Uh-huh. They're all in jail. Right. Like every, like the homeless are just coming in like, well, I want I want to trim in case my girlfriend blows me. Oh uh, yeah, I need loads of razors. I need razors. Forget the, food. I got to I can sell these on the street. I uh I always get stuck behind that deathly sick person, you know, the guy who should be quarantined, but instead he's hacking up a third lung right in front of me in line for the razors. Call me insensitive, but I don't know, I want a pack of blades, not the bird flu or Ebola <laughs> or MRSA. I don't want MRSA. No. I just want razors. And the best ones I have ever used, my friends, I'm putting my name on it. Uh, Dollar Shave Club. Uh, DollarShaveClub.com. They mail them right to my house. They'll mail them right to your house. You avoid the drugstore and all the sick, gross people in there. Join DollarShaveClub.com. It might save your life. You know what Not I mean? Right. You don't, you don't want to get some life-threatening typhoid. disease. Typhoid. You don't want to get typhoid. No. Legionnaire's disease. Legionnaire's. Lupus is a big killer. I, I, I don't, Middle-aged I don't white want men. lepus either. Lepus, yeah. lupus, and you don't want lopus. And lopus is horrible. Uh, dollars. And, and Davy Lopes, which is uh, hard to get. You end up stealing a lot. Yeah, if you do it, that, that is interesting. But you're not good at managing. No, you're not. No. But you do steal. Oh, no, you steal all the time. Yeah, you don't want to catch. Seconds open, you're going. You don't want to catch David Lopes. No, you, you, you get the green light. But you, you will. Yeah. It's, it's a weird affliction. Yeah, it's, it's a singular. Don't go to the drugstore and catch Davy Lopes. Go to dollarshaveclub.com. Dollarshaveclub.com. I assure you guys, this is not some BS thing. They are the actual greatest razors I've ever used in my life. Now, Greg, uh, you were in Norway, and you uh, everybody was very tall. Everybody, you you seemed fascinated at how tall, and you received a lot of gifts in your travels through uh, throughout Europe. Uh, I got uh, an entire bottle of vodka rolled onto the stage at Amsterdam, and I had no idea what it was at that point. And my paranoia took over, and I was like, "This isn't going to be some explosive device." And then I remembered it's my crowd, and no, it was just booze. and an enormous gingerbread that was so big I couldn't bring it home with me. Like someone made me a like a cookie. Yeah, that said you know smartest man in the world on it, but it was it weighed four hundred and fifty pounds and it was this big. You know what I mean? Like uh, like I won the Preakness or something. You know, like it was big. And I took a picture with him with it. But I'm like I get it. You know, back to the hotel. I'm like my wife's like, what are you gonna do with it? I'm like I'm le- I'm leaving it. I'm it, it I, if I bring it they'll charge me for overweight. You know, like it, it was the size of a fucking funeral wreath. <laughs> <laughs> you, you leave it in the hotel room with a note. Housekeeping, thank you. Yeah, from the smartest uh, gingerbread <laughs> collector in that. No, I get a lot of nice gifts. I got these little squirrels the squirrel made in Vancouver. Um, and, well, hold on. What? Squirrels? Well, yeah, they were little squirrel uh, brooches, uh, and I put one in my bag for good luck. And, yeah. uh, then a girl gave us – we were doing Whose Line uh, a couple weeks ago up in um, uh, Ontario, and a girl gave us – I'm not kidding. And I don't know how she fucking made these decks of cards, I guess, because she knows we play poker on the bus or whatever. And the, the, uh, face cards were us. Was so you, like, uh, yeah. you, Drew, Ryan. It was, that was, yeah, me, Ryan, Jeff Davis, and Chip Aston. Uh, Drew just tapped out? Well, Drew's not in our little, fo- I do a forehander with, uh, these guys. You broke off. You formed wings. Yeah, we did. We're wings too, man. <laughs> I'm going to give you the double thumbs up in a minute, because that's what wings did. And it was always horrible. There's, if you ever watch the Helen Wheels video on YouTube, Paul McCartney goes like this, and him and Linda both go like that in it. Big thumbs So four yeah, thumbs up. did the double up. thumbs up, yeah, which is like, you don't have to do that, because if you want me to keep watching, <laughs> I don't know I'm why gonna bunk a little. People give wings shit. I, I like good. I like a lot of wings. I had a band on the run. Was that not wings? Silly love songs. Oh, uh, wow. Well, that one, that one, and someone's knocking on the door. That one gets a little. I mean, I'd rather listen to that than fucking Maxwell Silver Hammer. Yeah, Maxwell Silver. I heard a great uh, interview with John Lennon on one of those Morning with the Beatles shows that they have, you know. Uh, on Sunday morning, they'll have like a five-hour Beatles thing. And they were playing a tape of John, and they were talking about making Abbey Road. And he goes, I don't know why Paul thought Maxwell Silverhammer was going to be a big hit. And we worked on it for fucking ages. And he goes on and on. <laughs> he goes, and it has all these special effects in it with the noises and the fucking hammer and whatnot. And he goes, and it just died. You know, we tried. <laughs> And but they, I love that that was John's take on it, that that, that song was like, really? We're going to do this one again today? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And Abbey Road is my favorite. It's a beautiful album. Beatle album yeah. of all time. Yeah. It's weird they made that album after they, like, people don't realize they weren't the Beatles anymore. They just no. kind of cobbled up things together. Yeah. And like halves of song, like Polythene Pam. And- yeah. There's all one whole side of the album that's like halves of songs. 
Yeah. And they played together. It's the, it's unlike Let It Be or, or White Album where they kind of played separately. They came together and played together for that last album. Which Beatle would you have been? Mm, I'd like to say I'd be George the Sexy That's one. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say you're jo- I had you pegged for a George. Yeah, because he's, he's the one the chicks still dig, man. When they put out that Apple ad last year and it had the Beatles in it, it's like George in front with a fucking jeans and a jean shirt on. And you're like, yeah, I get why they use that one. Because like gr- girls I- now put him on their fashion blogs. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Because he's the male model of the group, especially later when it, the facial hair. Yeah. And he's the thin one, you know. And then he always wore, like, if you remember Bangladesh and shit, he always had, like, a cream colored suit or a white suit. Yeah, and, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, he was really hot, you know. Do you, it's almost <laughs> like with the Beatles, I like, George is the guy, like, Paul, it seems, was, like, they're not in a detrimental way whatsoever, but he was like the Colonel Parker, the Gene Simmons. Right, I mean, like, keep it going. There's man. a way to do this. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go on a magical mystery tour, yeah, yeah. you know, and right. we're going we're to be Sergeant Pepper. I got and ideas. Like, yeah, and John was the guy that would just trip on acid, yeah, smoke yeah. heroin, and yeah. then, but when it was his time to go, it was like just letting a greyhound out of the chute. Yeah. He just ran like hell and he nailed it. Yeah. But George was the guy that like just seemed to be the rock star like, all right, all right. He's the more, more like a rock star than them, yeah. He I think he didn't green. have a good time at Elvis's house. No, because, that's my favorite story. Just asking everybody for weed and shit. Yeah, but they were all railed out on right. pills. They're all on uppers. Yeah, and, and, and he, Elvis was watching TV playing the bass or whatever. He's up in his bedroom yeah, watching the yeah. Beatles on closed circuit TV. <laughs> like, that's how he took guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he was so whacked out. Yeah. And George, like, very, I think he was, he was on one of the shows. Like, I didn't have a good time. I just kept asking for brief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they but didn't they were, have any because they were from they were fucking Tennessee. Then. Hey, man, Memphis Mafia, man. Any, yeah. You want a gun? You need anything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just go out to the pool and look for some more. Like he went out to the pool, like maybe the reef, like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Maybe there's reef out there. I know. I love that part. <laughs> I love that they didn't actually, you know. And of course, I'm sure they worshipped him. And then they got up there and they're like, mm. it seems that way too. It seems like everybody that met all the idols in that time, like whether it be Sinatra or Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Like when the Beatles met Ali, like both sides were like not into it. Mm-hmm. They got that one classic photo. Right, of him punching them and they're all <laughs> But they were advantage. both like, can I just go back to skipping rope? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like he didn't really care about them either. No, and this is a photo op more than anything else. Uh, I mentioned Rock and Roll Jeopardy and I love this story <laughs> so much because you have made more success uh, thumbing your nose at the establishment mm. than most people I that, like. I'm glad you think it's success. Mm. I w- that one I would have liked to have done only because. Right, hold on a second. You're in fucking Oslo doing a <laughs> podcast, and it's a full house. I can't. You know, I'm sweating out, swelling out, uh, selling out the Brea Improv. <laughs> That's down the road. It's 40 miles from here. I'm like, how are the house Thursday? How's Thursday looking? What about Sunday? Yeah. I know Saturday would be full. You're in Oslo. You're in Edinburgh. You go to other, you went to New Zealand. Full, it's a full place. Yeah, that that's was a That's cool good one. as hell. It how do these fun. people, do they all know you from whose line? Yeah, New Zealand especially. Whose line I think played there for like 15 or 20 years and they have no TV. You know, there's like two fucking channels. I was going to say, they must have one Three, TV to yeah. see your show. And a bunch of Australian channels, you know. And they make no shows of their own. There's like two New Zealand shows. And they have the best channel ever, which is the um, Maori channel. Because the Maoris have a state channel that, that's funded, you know, so they can be on TV all the time. And there's a show on it that's simply them kind of half in the bag doing karaoke. And it's called <laughs> Packy Up, which doesn't mean the same thing in Maori. It's yeah. like, let's go or, you know, have a good time or whatever. But it's spelled P-A-K-I, which in England you would never have anything spelled Packy because it just means you're being horrible about Pakistanians. Oh, really? Yeah. And Boston. Yeah, and right, Packy. The Packy girl. A Packy. Uh, but their show's called Packy Up. And my wife and I watch that every day when we're in his. I was on too. in the afternoon. Maoris would come on kind of half in the bag that had a couple and they'd have like cowboy hat on and shit. And they'd be like, sometimes it's hard to be a woman. And you'd be like, this is the greatest TV show. And the listeners should know like full oh, tattooed yeah. faces. Saying a lot of car- uh, a lot of country. Yeah, they had tattooed faces. Sometimes pop. Sometimes it'd be the gay one, you know. And uh, uh, But the Maoris are – and. Uh, it's amazing in New Zealand how present they are. Unlike any other Aboriginal people in any country you go to, we don't have an American Indian channel. And, you know, more is the fucking pity. But, like, uh, in New Zealand, they're part of the parliament. They're always in the paper. You know, they, they got back a lot of their land by suing the New Zealand government over the last 150 years. So they've kind of made us... I said to someone when I was there, I've never really been to a country where the people who live there before the white people are as much in the mix, you know... I mean, I'm not saying it's fair for them or it's great or whatever. It's just their way there. When you go there, there's their politicians on TV with fucking tattoos all over their faces and piercings through their nose and shit in Parliament talking about stuff. And 
It's Can you imagine like, Orrin Hatch just shows up with Mike Tyson's face <laughs> tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking plate in his, and his lip. delivery, I hope. I uh, I like to yield my time to the fine senator with a bone in his nose yeah. from Tennessee, <laughs> the volunteer state. And it's just some guy with a tattooed right. face. But you said they sued. Yeah, they've been suing for their like the seabed rights and their land rights and shit. They've been using the law for the last million years to kind of get back. Unlike the Australian and Native Americans, right, who've been who went, marginalized, they beyond went to all. war and yeah. lost. Right, right. That's what well. They always say it's the Indians, and I think I said it on my podcast once. In America, it's the the Declaration of Independence that fucked the Indians more than anything. Because before that, as you know, they fought for everybody. They fought on the French side and the British side in the French and Indian War. And uh, everybody used them for 250 years to, as guides and married them and every other goddamn thing. And they used to petition European governments. They were seen as an entity. The Iroquois could go to the French government and say, we'll work for your army. And then after the declaration, Europe went, they're yours. And then Andrew Jackson said, get them out. Yep. And then so they would still go to Europe and try to petition governments to get, you know, help them. And the European governments were like, you're part of America. America declared its independence as a separate sovereign nation. You have to do, you have to deal with the American government. And they just kept getting pushed, getting pushed. That was it. And I think that's really like the big moment in Indian history where up until then they'd been able to make money off of different European countries by trying to keep themselves in the game and you know uh, not and like you say once by, by the time of Jackson they're being pushed across the country and they're being forced to live in reservations and I mean not that there wasn't genocide from the start but hey this is America. <laughs> Hey, if we're not doing <laughs> it's genocide. It's a great comedy show. I really like to take it to a dark place as soon as I possibly can. No, people can. dig it. We, I, me and Brian Callen sat here and talked for, uh, presidential history for an hour Did straight. you really? Yeah, that's all we did. We talked about our favorite presidents. Who are your favorite presidents? Oh, you already done Truman. that one. Oh, Truman. I love Truman because Truman. he had greatness thrust upon him. Yeah, he did. Like, oh, welcome aboard. By the way, we have we need to have a meeting. There's this nuclear bomb we're about to drop. We, you yeah. should know about it since now you're in charge of pushing the button. Yeah. Created Israel. Yeah. Uh, according to my Bible, this is where it is. I mean, that, integrated know. the armed forces, signed the, signed yes. the desegregation <clears throat> bill, uh, broke up the steel strike during the Korean fucked War, fucked with MacArthur, yeah, big time, MacArthur. big time. How about this? Wouldn't let the uh, White House. They wanted to redo the White House. Do you know the story? No. They wanted to redo the White House uh, during the Korean War. It was falling apart. It was right. complete shambles. And like a crazy old man from Independence, Missouri, or wherever. So I'm going to get a tweet. He's actually from fucking. He's no, from he's fucking, from Independence. Oh, okay. Well, you'll see. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here they come. He wasn't actually from Independence. He was from Florissant, and right. then he moved to Independence when he was one. So, yeah. But he kept saying, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you would start in the back in the basement. That's important to me. That's, uh. that's where I spend my time. And he'd never spend a day there. Yeah, in his life. And they just kept going, well, we got to get started. And he just kept going like a crazy old man. And then it wasn't until like he was way at like five years out of office where he goes, you can't have scaffolding on the White House when you're at war on television. No. And I was like, holy that's shit. That's a genius that, thing to say. So, and, but he wouldn't let anyone in. Right. He wouldn't let anyone know what he was thinking. No. He just kept going, if you guys could start in the backyard – and go underneath uh -huh. from the back. Keep, would, keep, keep over there. <clears throat> yeah, I really need that basement in the back. Yeah, I love it down there. Uh, wow. Who Supposedly he wrote Nuke Stalin on his desk pad too, right? Really? I didn't yeah, know yeah, yeah. Nuke Stalin was, you know, like the two do. Stalin really fucked it up for everybody. Yeah. We really thought we were just going to split it like kids in a schoolyard. That's, like. that's Roosevelt's big failing though, isn't it, at the end of his term. He's a little too weak to meet with them the last time, really. They got pushed around at Yalta, I think. We had fucking – he was in a wheelchair dying. It wasn't well, I mean, like, yeah, that's he, he, he wasn't being belligerent like, fuck, no. let him come to me. And he's up against the hardest ass motherfucker that ever lived. you know. Like, But don't you think we all thought, even though we weren't alive, but don't you think America and all the countries, France and England, thought like, when this is all over, we'll just spread it out? Like, mm -hmm. in a school – and then Stalin goes, hey, thanks for saving us after 100 million Russians died. Yeah. We're going to go our own way now. Yeah, yeah. That was like the ultimate mafia move of all time. Fuck oh, you, yeah. pay me. Oh, he's hard. He's Bad the dude. hardest. Uncle Joe. Well, then, you know, Hitler's always the metaphor for everything that's evil always, and, that's, and it still persists. But and why is that? Uncle I never Joe really... might be more evil than – yeah, why is that? Uh, no, Uncle, I don't know if you can put Uncle Joe I don't Joe know in. more evil, but he certainly had as many people done. Yeah, he did. He had a lot of guys waxed. And like you say – Nobody lost people like the Russians did in World War II. They lost a gajillion people. It was 100 million, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. The, and, and when they came back across, when they finally beat the Germans out, you know, at the front and, and were coming back across to win, um, I've seen documentaries where the, they were like, the Russians were like, 
they didn't want to see the Red Army come in. You didn't want to see them come through your own towns. He said, the Nazis didn't rape everyone and steal everything. The Nazis were disciplined, even in retreat. Like, they're like the Roman Legion, right? Everybody, you know, eyes front, let's go. And the Red Army would come through and fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you had to rape, hide your food and shit. Village, oh, yeah. yeah. They just fucking stole everything everywhere they went Bastard. on the way back through, you know. But again, they felt like they'd been fighting harder than anyone else for five years. And It does make you think. Street like, to street, house to house and all that. If you were on the battlefield that long in the <clears throat> snow and if you actually mm-hmm. came across a house with like a nice warm fire inside. Uh, yeah. I'm a taking your chicken table. and your daughter. Like, so and I'm all starving your, and I'm yeah, going mad. And... We're not excusing it, of course. Uh, so no, it's war. I mean, that's speaking a... of Gorky Park, the great yes. band. Let's go back to uh, Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Okay, because the fact that you did not host Rock and Roll Jeopardy is really a travesty in the eyes of uh, all of show business. Well, it was someone with a name very close to mine. Yeah, from the same derivation. Probst and Proops are very close. Well, what did he ever do after that? He Not flamed enough. out. He seemed, to have, he seemed to have floated away. Jesus Christ, Survivor. I know. Just, We're on 20 seasons now or something? How great would it be to be the host of Survivor? Everyone's in there getting like uh, mosquito bites in yeah. like, their dick holes. And you're like, yeah. all right, let me put your torch out. I'm going back to the four. I was going to say, I'm going to I'm I'm get, get, get a four <laughs> hands massage. Yeah. I'm getting the hot stone tonight. Oh, God. And the soup at this hotel. To die. (laughs) To die. It's a lemongrass with a little chicken. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm late. I'm a little hungover. Yeah, yeah. I've been drinking Chardonnay all fucking night. (sighs) Went big with Mandela last night. (laughs) Uh, But how are you guys enjoying Africa? Yeah. It's like, we're dying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever do one of those shows? I don't think so, because I can't. Uh, I can't shit outside with other people around me. <laughs> That's the reason yeah. you would not want like a million dollars. I have price. too many afflictions. I have drops and unguents and lotions. I have to, it, it takes me four, I'm like Jerry Lewis. I have to lay in the bath for an hour before I get up and take Percodan. <laughs> <laughs> Suppositories. I don't want anyone to see how blind I am. Also, I don't want anyone to see my real personality, you know. You know how it is. Like, they get enough of that on the podcast and shit like that. You don't want to see me like when I'm in the worst fucking mood ever and I haven't eaten, which is the whole time you're on the island because you're never getting enough food. So personality-wise, you don't think you could fit? I don't know. I went to an interview once for that. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here in London. But I was pretty bloaty and sweaty on the day, and I think I scared the shit out of them. Uh, I don't think they were ready for that interview. So, like, they, they went with Melissa Rivers. Yeah, exactly. And Melissa did quite well on she that did. fucking version, man. I saw her do that one. She's cool as hell, by the I way. I like Melissa Rivers. She's I've always street. been friends with her. She and did. she's got, she, you know what? She's a great mom. She lives up yeah. the street, and she, you, my grandfather used to say, you tell a lot about a guy by his children, and mm-hmm. I'll apply that to Melissa. She's got a great kid. I, I think I would do okay on Survivor. He's got to be older now. What, 14, maybe? Huh? Uh, 12. 12. 13, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were right. I could have just said yes. No, I don't know. You're right. He's probably 12. I, I think the thing with Survivor that makes me crazy is like, you could play it completely right, and then just everyone behind your back just mm-hmm. goes, let's get I'd lose the weight. I would do it because you'd lose the weight. You'd be tanned and you'd lose 15 pounds easily. I think, I think that when I see uh, homeless guys, right. I'm like, Ooh. wow, these guys are so fucking tanned. Yeah. And look- I got to spend $1,500 on a tanning package right. At, right. at dark with a QUE. <laughs> tanning salons and eyeglass shops love their puns. If you stay outside all day every day, you can have that tan. Right? Really? <laughs> and I don't have to work. Hope you're enjoying Greg Proops. It's brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many, many New York Times bestsellers. For our listeners of more stories, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. Just try it. You can download your choices and access them on your PC, burn them onto CDs, upload them to iPads or other MP3 devices. It's quick, easy, fun, affordable entertainment, and it's free for people of all ages. If you're a five-year-old listening to this, when you get that new Curious George book you had your eye on, there you go. One audio book to consider is, well, Curious George Makes a Pizza. That's the one I'd get for my kid because Tony, the pizza maker, says, I forgot all about it. And we yell it at bedtime and we all laugh. And I'm not even kidding. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash J-A-Y. Audiblepodcast.com slash J. Would you do one of those shows? <clears throat> I, I don't know. They seem to have been – they're not quite as uh, – they, they were trying to put one together, I remember, four or five years ago where we were going to – and this was the premise – 
driving cars across the country as teams of comedians and then funny things were going to happen somehow. Like Cannibal Run with comics? Ish. And I remember Harlan Williams... Harlan Williams was really into it and phoned me and was like, I'll see you on the road, buddy. And I thought, it wouldn't be that bad to be in a car with Harlan. It'd be weird, right? But like, after a couple of weeks, you just give over and just be like, okay, fucking, let's stop here and get a Hi, Dr. Pepper or whatever. Nut. You know? We're going to pull over and get Alien Jerky yeah, yeah, right. and then we'll Everyone watch Harlan. Curly Sue on DVD. I got... Yeah, for, for weeks. You would have to surrender to the, to the Harlan. You, I would have had... Because I thought, of, well, if I'm in a car with him... But I remember they'd ask Paul Tompkins, because I remember I saw Paul at a comedy club in like Atlanta or somewhere. And I went, Paul, did they hit you with this premise for this show? We're going to be in cars and drive across the country. And Paul, hilarious, because Paul looks at me from over the mustache and goes, to what end? <laughs> I think you and I would have done good. You and I would be, but we would be laughing the whole fucking time and well, that's, telling stories. That's and good shit. TV. Yeah, right. But that's the point. And then the club date money goes up. Maybe, maybe it wasn't a bad idea for a show. Everyone on my team hated it. I remember that. Everyone that uh, like works with me near me was like, "Oh, you, why would you do that?" And I kept thinking, "This isn't really that bad." I mean, you know. I think you specifically, uh, with your lotions and your potions, <laughs> like you need to get to checkpoint B oh, faster yeah. than everybody because you know you need to put the visine in. Oh yeah, you got to use your La Mer cream exactly. Your yeah. Dollar Shave Club razors. Yeah, my Dollar Shave Club razors. So uh, I can trim you clothes. Got, yeah, you got to do all those things. So we're not going to stop. You know, we're going to pee mm. in like uh, water bottles on the way. We're not wasting time. We're not pulling. No, over I got to get to Bloomingdale's. I'm out of fucking Hermes and shit. Yeah, so let's get, <laughs> let's get there. I early. have no collar stays left. This trip has been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, look what I'm wearing. Everything's wrinkled. Do you have any more concealer? We, you know, yeah, what? Right. I'm, I'm going to step on it. Right, right. We're out of concealer. Yeah, what? I have serum, but I have no cream. Yeah. <gasps> uh, but I, then there are comics. Like I, I think Harlan would be like, "Have you ever seen the world's biggest tree?" Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I was going to say. You, you definitely end up at an acorn farm or something and be there for. It's like a, a corn year. maze. We're going to have a good time in the corn maze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he'd all... be hiding behind a thing. Yeah, and... I'm in a corn maze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you and I would have been well paired. Rob Riggle's a guy you'd want on that. Oh yeah, Lieutenant Colonel. Oh yeah, Rob Riggle, USMC. He knows. He probably knows because well, some... he can survive and shit. Yeah, but he also probably knows some crazy fucking back road through a navy yard. That oh, that's he has true. Access right, to. right, right. Like just drives through the navy yard in Seal Beach instead of going down the PCH. Right. There's like green canisters everywhere <laughs> oozing, <laughs> oozing luminous liquids of various lethal Don't look canisters in the <laughs> eye, JJ. <laughs> yeah. So. That's I, I always wanted to do cannibal I wanted to do that show. I didn't know anybody else had it in the hopper, so I guess I won't pitch it. Was it. Four or five years ago I remember because uh uh but it never you know, it got to the meeting stage. I don't know if we ever had a meeting. I remember somebody talked to me about it and then there was a thing and a thing and it never fucking happened and it wasn't the worst premise ever. But welcome all Jeopardy. The audition was a good one. Because one uh four times by Mark McGrath, I believe. Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray. Was a veteran of this podcast. The greatest savant ever on that show. Yeah. I won it and I beat um uh Graham Nash. I think I might have told that on my if I told it on my show, I won't tell it again. But you you mentioned him, but I don't remember. Graham Nash was on the show, and of course I was like Oh, you were a contestant. I later you years were not after host. not being the host, I got on and it was me and Kari Vur. Remember Kari Vur? Yeah. Uh, you know what I heard about Kari Vur? She was on singled out? No, remote control. Uh, singled out Singled out And then she was on The sci-fi channel right. With Jerry O'Connell No tell me what you know About her uh, Kleptomaniac Really Yeah he said just Weird shit from the set Would just go really? home With Kari Awesome And everybody was like She dated a lot of Rock star types that Has I anybody seen The Dolly Grips <clears throat> cart No it's it was, gone Yeah Why did someone Want tape and clamps Why, why is that Mini Cooper <laughs> Shooting sparks out the back What's so heavy <laughs> Yeah yeah, yeah. She, Somebody took the Halo game. She answered out of the one question, I think. She looked fantastic, you know. I think I made a boner joke, like, I'm glad this, uh, you know, uh, Deus is in front of me or whatever the fuck. I think I did one of those classic rock jokes. <laughs> and, uh. Otherwise, you guys see my boner. But, yeah. If, if, boy, because Cars giving me a chubber. Uh, and I beat Graham Nash at the end, and he was fucked off, and then was really gracious about it. Like, you could, on the moment, I could tell because he fucking threw his buzzer down. What was the question? I can't remember the last ah. one. I only remember the one I got wrong, which was... Uh, Give it to me. This Ozzy Osbourne album is named after a short story by Gogol. Mr. Crowley. Diary of a Madman. Oh, that's, that was the easy one. 
I sound like Colin Quinn. I fumbled it. I fumbled it. And I said, right, Mr. Crowley, I said, I, uh, like Leon I said lower depths, which is retarded. Why would he do an album called Lower Depths? He would only do one called I'm a Werewolf or whatever, or The Moon. Yeah. Ozzy doesn't have an album called Lower Depths. No, of course he doesn't. <laughs> That's how bad I chewed that one. You That's what made I remember. made up an Ozzy album? Yes. That's <laughs> uh, Abacab. And the guy went, you know, to probes, goes, Di- Diary of a Madman. And I'm like, uh, yeah, only. That one, right? Like, of course. But it was the Gogol thing that threw me. I was like, Gogol? This is what, wah. And then, of course, well, yeah. But I don't remember what I won on. I really don't. But I do remember this. Before me was the Bare Naked Ladies playing Nile Rodgers. And um, they smoked him. The Bare Naked Ladies held control of that board every second of the game. And Nile Rodgers knows everything about music, right? And, like, is a fucking, you know, genius producer, Produced Madonna, David Bowie, Duran Duran, like there, nothing Nile Rodgers didn't do. Wrote a thousand hit songs. R- wrote I'm Coming Out by Diana Ross. I'm coming. Yeah, he wrote that and said to her, you have a gay following. You need to do this fucking song. And she's like, I don't want to do it. It's too gay. And he goes, I was at uh, a club in New York. Might have been Studio 54. He was a habitué of Studio 54 where he lived in the ladies' restroom, apparently, where he did all his coke. And he said he saw five Diana Rosses, all men. Right, waiting in the ladies' room, and he went to her. You got to do this fucking song <laughs> because she was like, mm, you know, like Donna Summer. I'm reluctant about the gay thing, and he's like, no, understand. I was at a club last night, and there's like squadrons of black guys dressed as you red <laughs> in tail. 1970. You know, the original Red Tail. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, a squadron. <laughs> there's like Diana Ross. I always love that one because I saw five guys dressed like her, and I fucking went, "You got to do." It. And then it came out, and she was mad. And then it went right to number one. And then she called him again. I was like, "Oh, you're a genius." And we could have beaten Stalin if we said a squadron of Diana Ross. You uh, know, we could have. Donna Summer impersonators. Uh, the, what, what is uh, Martin uh, Marlon Brando saying in the movie? The war would be if I had ten divisions of that kind of man. Our troubles here would be over very soon. I assure yes, you. Sir. Yes, uh, sir. How did, how did the uh, Graham Nat, Was he mad? He was angry that he lost, but then he was really nice after. And backstage, we were riffing because he's English and has a sense of humor. And I said, uh, oh, what? I, you're treating me this way just because I got a couple of your albums? And he goes, only a couple? And then Carver's phone went off, and it was in her purse. And he answered it and went, hi, I'm Graham Nash. <laughs> and like, just took she was in the bathroom or something. And he just got up from the chair in the green room. And he brought his real estate agent and his ex-wife with him, which made me more happy than anything that real could have ever. Agent. Yes. It was great. <clears throat> He's got a book coming out. He's uh, and I think I told that in the show. He goes, I saw Bill Haley in the comments when I was a teenager at the Sheffield Town Hall. And I go, Bullshit, man. He goes, Swear to God. Reaches in his wallet and pulls out a laminated ticket from like nineteen fifty eight. When he was like 15 or 16. And it's Bill Haley and this rock and roll band. You know, it has the date on it and everything. And he had, he goes, I had it laminated, man. This is a seminal moment in my life. I wanted to be a rock star after that. And I was like, well, that's your wheelhouse. Like, you talk so much about, you know, going to see the cars <laughs> yeah, right. and Blondie and stuff. Like, you know so much your first concerts. And you. Wouldn't you remember if you were in a band and you were. No, I mean, you, but you specifically, anyone. Greg Proops. Yeah. Like, when I listen to your podcast. The reverence that you have for the music and, you know, even bands that you know now, like, well, they kind of fucking suck. Yeah. But, like, you give them their due at the time. I I mean. The Cars were hilarious because they only had 10 songs, so they played the whole album, and then they played Just What I Needed Again. (laughs) (laughs) That was their encore. It was great. And everybody went, yay! They played their whole first album. I think they had one other song, and then they went, like, here we go. I don't mind you coming home. They fucking did it again. And what's not to like? I would, I would, if I go see the cars, you better play that twice. Uh, yeah. And that was their first record. Uh, I think, have I told you this one? Wasting all my time. I, I go to see, I went to see Blondie and uh, the Ramones in 1978 at Whoa. Santa Cruz Civic Center. Let right? that sit for a second. That's kind of cool. That was a great show. Yeah. Blondie opening for the Ramones. No, it was, I think the Ramones opened for Blondie. Then I'm guessing Blondie probably couldn't follow the Ramones. No. Well, the Ramones were so buzzsaw, man. Cause they would play like 35 songs, you know, in like in 40 minutes, you know, yeah. they, Really played fast. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just fucking threw, flew through it. And they're really good. And then uh, my cousin Donnie and I drove down from San Carlos, where I lived, uh, on the 17, which the was San the San Carlos the Dons. Yeah, Maddie. San Carlos Dons. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. The Dons. The Dons. Spanish landowners. And right. uh, we, uh, I remember we got high and we went and we loved it. It's cut to 
maybe three years ago, I'm with Ryan Stiles and we're doing the Who's Line show and we played the Santa Cruz Civic Auditorium. I walk in the place and I went, it's so much smaller than I remember. All I remember that was this giant hall. And I says to the lady stage manager standing there with her headphones on, she's about my age. I go, I was here in 1978 and I saw the Ramones and Blondie and she went, that was a good show. <laughs> Those stage and I was managers. Like, You're still here? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yes. And now she, yeah, and then she's going to 78. CU. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good union gig. Yeah. You play theaters. That's you know good. what a hassle uh-huh. it is. It's $600 per stage hand. Oh yeah. In oh New my York. god, they, do they stick you for that stuff? In New York they do. When I played the Beacon Theater, yeah. it was I think it was 600 per and it had to be like a minimum of And how many hands? 6? No, it was a lot. It was it was it 12. was 12. If it was six, I would have been like, eh, twelve hundred dollars. Right. Oh, who gives a shit? But it was enough where I was like, what? What is this guy doing? Yeah, and it's other a cur- than drinking, there's no curtain to raise. No, there's no lights. Uh, it's one, a- one spotlight, maybe. Yeah, and that's what two, I tried to explain. Two to follows, them. and then uh, a friend of mine was a teamster, and he goes, "JJ, it's a union job. Just yeah. that's it. Leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. Yeah. So, uh, rock and roll, fucking Jeopardy. You ho- you were going to be the guest host. Your audition. Yeah, I auditioned. Uh, Merv Griffin production, I believe? Yes. Merv was there. Now, do and, people uh, know that he was gay? I, Is it just you and I? I I'm and, not supposed to say it, apparently. People apparently don't know, and his family's fiercely protective of his memory. But uh, evidently, it's sort of something that everyone knows, but uh, is not something that everyone says, I guess. So, I don't know. I uh, thought everyone knew, but... Uh, I always thought everybody knew. But evidently, I think they'll fuck with you if you say so. Well, I'm not saying he's gay. I'm just saying... I'm not either. A straight guy, <laughs> as you... Uh, he was nice as could be, man. As you may have said uh, somewhere yeah. not in public, no. uh, not a lot of straight guys have uh, Ava Gabor on as lead guest promoting nothing. And uh, carry a little dog with him. He was as lovely as can be, and I did three or four things for him. And uh, <clears throat> none of them ever went. And I remember we did one, and it was some game show. And we used to meet over at the hotel, right, over on Beverly, uh, the Beverly Hilton, you know, the one on the corner of Wilshire. And, yes, sir. Well, that he the owned, I think, drive, at the right time, there. right? And so there was pictures of his show everywhere. Like, as you walk through, there would be pictures of him with, like, Liza and, you know, Ava and everybody. Totally straight. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and um, we got up to do this run-through. And you know how when you do a game show run-through, they, you know, there's the guy with the bell, and you really act it out, and you have the contestants come up, and you do the thing and the thing. You kind of do as much as close to a run-through as you can. We maybe did five minutes, and Merv jumped up and went, okay, you see how it goes. That's cool. It was really cool. And everybody, there were all syndicators in the room. They all nodded. And then he dressed up as Diana, uh, <laughs> Di- Donna Summer. <laughs> I'm coming up. And then I he, want the world. And then he went into the bathroom with he Niall Rogers. So nice. I would love him. And, and Georgette was his assistant. And she was the one who was really uh, in my corner. That's why I think I did three or four pilots for him of different, you know, relationship shows. The dude was a genius of TV and was always selling something. Nothing that I was ever on, but he tried to sell things. And Rock and Roll Jeopardy was his too. Uh, yeah, I really did say to them, I have a joint in the ashtray of my Volvo, and you are forming a blockade in front of it right now. Because they said, tell us about what your day is like. And I go, okay. I've like done just the during audition. The, audi- the audition happens. After the audition, you got to do, you got to ch- chat with them. They wanted to see how Great. you, pers- you know how they do the personality thing in Miss America? <laughs> yes. Now we want to talk to you and see what you're like. So I went, okay. And they're like, well, why should we give you the show? And I went, well, first of all, uh, you're forming a joint blockade because I have a, a, a J in the ashtray of my Volvo <laughs> that you're keeping me from right now. And that was your like, so like if it was me, for example, I would, uh, cause I'm just a whore for the corporate teeth. Yeah. I'll suck and suck well, and I'll just keep going and I'll move on to the next cow when I'm done. And I, cause that's what happens when you have kids. Yeah. You go, sure. I'll, whatever it takes. Uh, not, and that's not a reflection on the sponsors and anybody having to do with the podcast. As I've illustrated, I actually, I'll show you the razors when we go upstairs. <laughs> uh, but I like, for example, just so the listener, a little showbiz inside, and this plays into you going against the corporate. I could have been nicer, I suppose. <laughs> could have been I thought little, it was funny. The last line. Also, it was Rock and Roll Jeopardy, Mr. I thought. Saturday Night. You could have right. been a little nicer. Right. If there was one epi- <clears throat> if there was one show, I thought I could get away with it. It was that one. So, like, I would have said, like, well, I, I spend my days. They go, like, tell us a little about yourself. Like, right. for me, for example, I would have said, well, I really just, I'm an audiophile. I spend my days listening to music. I yeah. love rock and roll. I love Jeopardy. Yeah. And I've loved all Merv Griffin productions my whole right. life. So just being here, I'm kind of freaking out. Like, I would yeah, just yeah. totally and suck you everyone off. I would have sucked everyone off. Yeah. And they'd so, have loved you. 
And then you uh, instead said, I, you're forming a joint blockade. I got to get out there. And they all laughed. And then that was the end of that. And Georgette called me and went, you were fantastic. We're not giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say why? Yeah. No, she didn't have to say why. Je- Jeff's a great host, you know, but he's a lot smoother. I was going to be a little more, um, you know, rock and roll or whatever. I, You're the I, Elvis Costello of comedy. Yeah, I thought I'd bring a little more of the fucking, like, isn't this supposed to be about the fun of it? And Yeah. So Niall Rogers lost to the Bare Naked Ladies, and he came into the green room, and I didn't get to meet him because he was kicking shit over at that point. He was so mad that they smoked him. And I mean, he didn't get, I, he probably had a couple hundred points. And they had like 3,000 each or whatever. And then on final, they, you know, they just, you know, <laughs> snorfed him. And, you know, they're just these Canadian guys with the fucking flannel shirts and they had their glasses and shit. And they're like, gee, Mr. Roger, that was really great. You're such, we're big fans. And he, ah, he was like, they're like, who is Steve Lillywhite? Yeah. He's vibrating with fucking, who is Robert Cray? Then I met Nile Roger like two years ago in Edinburgh and I, I never mentioned the fucking rock and roll Jeopardy episode to him, but, uh, oh, you did not. Mm Mm-mm. But if you ran into but I read his book and his book is fantastic. Really? I didn't know he had a book. He wrote a book a couple of years ago when he, that's what he's plugging in Edinburgh that year. And it was, uh, he talks about Madonna when he made Like a Virgin. He put that album together for her. And she comes up to him about halfway through and goes, how come you haven't tried to fuck me? And he goes, we're working together. And she's like, but everyone else tried to fuck me. What's your problem? And he's like, look, no, you know, like, <laughs> which I love that part in the book. And he's like, he, he wasn't shocked, but he was like, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he never made another record with her. You know, she's had a different giant producer for every album, but that was the album that fucking launched. I mean, she was big before that, but Like a Virgin was when she took off to the stratosphere. You, last time you were on the podcast, I believe it was a year ago, and uh, you and I agreed we're both the either the straightest gay guys or the gayest, or the gayest straight, straight guys. guys because we know far too much about musical Madonna. theater, Madonna. Like, cause I, right when you said that, I'm thinking of like, yeah, Papa don't pray. And then Ray of Light was really good. Yeah, Ray, but Ray of Light Ray was Light what was the ex- Dust Brothers or, or the Ray Chemical Light Brothers? Was exceptional. Chemical Brothers, maybe? Like I don't she know got who a big produced producer it. in for that one, man. But Ray of Light was like yeah. insane. I used yeah. to jog around the Hollywood Reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Ray of Light. Yeah. And it makes me feel like I'm gonna say And I feel it was great. Like and yeah. then you get to the song Candy yeah. Perfume. Yeah. Boy, I'm like, all right, this is a little gay. But I'm still hey, running. Man. When I was on a, a kid show on Nickelodeon, uh, there's a, a guy named Ronnie Butler who's a lovely guy and a great actor, and uh, he w- he played the receptionist on the show. And we were bored one day, you know, when there's nothing you not know, required. And he had brought a DVD of every Madonna video, like it was a two DVD set, and we sat upstairs and watched it for fucking hours, and we're like, "Oh my god, look at the sets," you know, and like, "Okay, <laughs> that oh yeah, it was Danny Jones. Aiello, yeah," because then there was a. Don't go full sick and best beer. beer which where she has the bra, the goatee bra, and the suit and everything. What if, <laughs> who is your? Do you have a favorite? Oh, Rick Ocasek of the Cars, by the way. Uh, he may only be able to go through his one album, yeah. but uh, we got to put a, a pin in that because the guy circled back around, tapped out of the cars, and went on to produce Bad Brands. Yeah, you wouldn't think Rick Ocasek, who no. look, who looks the like the only black punk group, right? Who, uh, Fishbone? A few Fishbone. Right? Yeah, there's a few, but yeah, you're, you're, they certainly are the trendsetters. But I, Rick Ocasek, who could be, uh, Lux Interior in, yeah, cer- right. in certain light from the cramps, right? Lux Have you seen Interior. him in person? You saw him in person, but you ever seen Rick Ocasek up close? No, but he's really gangly, right? He's ghastly. Yeah. Married to a supermodel. Right. Paulina, who's. And then delightful. somehow got HR to like get his yeah. fucking bipolar and banana ness together, which is well documented. I'm not uh, yeah. speaking out of school here. Mm-mm. What are you kicking about in the bipolar? Yeah. That's not right. Bipolar. <laughs> bipolar. Why you talk like that? We're one polar people. <laughs> it's, it's this one big pole. There's no more North Pole. It's the South Pole now. South Pole only. You, uh, are you surprised whenever you go, has there ever been a city that you got to, I, I'm, I'm still confounded in the best possible way with all respect and reverence that you go to these faraway lands and you fill these rooms. And it's, is it just from whose line? It, but there's I die think hard- so. And the podcast. The podcast gets downloads all over the world. That's the best part of doing it. And so I thought immediately... I'll do it live everywhere, and then I'll try to just add more places. So next year, I'm thinking about Berlin, Tallinn, Estonia, <laughs> uh, Bergen, Norway, which a lot of guys do. And, I thought you were going to say Bergen County, New Jersey. I, I know, got excited. Right? I'm like, I'll invite my folks. Yeah. I want to do Underhill. Uh, <laughs> Underwood? What's the city in New Jersey? Ridgewood? 
Ridgewood? Bundle Cherry? Woods. Cherry, Cherry Hill? Hill? Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. I got it wrong on three tries. Uh, that's, that's why you lost Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Yeah, we're trying And New to, Jersey Town Jeopardy. We're trying to sort out more dates for next year. And Amsterdam again. I saw Margaret Cho's playing all over Europe uh, in December, but it's too late to do anything. I think I'm going to end up playing. I'm in London in December, and then I'm going to go probably do Dublin and Cork while I'm there. Just God, nip I'd over. I'd love to play London. Oh, you got something coming up in town. Uh, Halloween Eve. Yes. October 30th, I'll be showing Eyes Without a Face at the Cine Family. The Greg Proops Film Club is part of the Smartest Man in the World podcast. I didn't start a separate one. I probably should have. But uh, every once in a while, I throw one of these in. And then, of course, half the people write me and go like, I hate this. Why don't you don't, you know, why, why are you just showing a movie? And then half the people write and go, oh, I love that one. Where's the with nail and I one or whatever? We've showed some goodies. Uh, and where is it? Plug this one first. Okay, first, uh, Cine Family, October 30th. It's on Fairfax Avenue in Hollywood. 7.30, we're going to show Eyes Without a Face. It's a 1959 French horror movie by Georges Franjou. who's kind of an arty director. It's supposed to be very poetic, as well as unbelievably grisly. Uh, mad doctor gets in a car accident with his daughters. Her face is disfigured, so he sends someone out every night in Paris to find pretty girls so he can graft their face onto his daughter's face. And that's why she's eyes without a face. She wears a mask through the whole movie. Like, uh, does he pick one Halloween. or does she walk around Halloween? with like 15 different models? Who's faces? the Michael? Uh, that's uh, William Shatner mask. That's Halloween. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he used different models. He, he sought out many different models. Yeah. So that's what the plot of this movie is. Does he pick one model? Is it, or is I don't it, know. Uh, I, I'm going to watch it before, uh, my wife picked the movie out. She picks a lot of them out. The last one we played was, uh, Oh, I, Sexy Beast, I picked that one. Oh, no, she might have picked that too. But we, Don't you think they should make it again with Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols as Ray Winston? Oh, my God. Uh, Ray, Steve Jones was here, and the whole yeah. time he sat where you're sitting, I'm like... Yeah, he's locked out, isn't he? Yeah, and he types in uh, Cockney. Like right. when, he, when he texts you, he Hello. Goes, thanks, F-A-N-K-S. Yeah, yeah, thanks. 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 Where you get your mustaches from, thanks. Yeah, thanks. But like the whole thanks, time right. Steve Jones sat here, the guy's like a fucking rock star. Right. Like a hot, hotter Julian Schnapp. Right. We're so right. He's gi- he's giant and he wears the glasses and everything. Yeah, and he's like so like he doesn't give a shit about it. And, he, mm-hmm. and then he crosses his arms and you see all his tats yeah. and you go, he was in the Sex Pistols. What yeah, is he yeah. doing here? Yeah, and he's just having a good time. He's just fucking off. And he can play still. He's a good. Player. He can play. Yeah, and he, he, can he play. could oddly couldn't play when he was in the Sex Pistols. Yeah, and, and then now he the, can play. The band leader for Russell Brand. He can play his balls off. Right, right. So your wife picked Eyes Without a Face. She did, and she picked. Uh, uh, we showed Annie Hall and uh, Pelham One Two Three. And uh, which one? A, another seven. The one uh, with oh, the Denzel, first one. The my first man, one. My yeah. Man. yeah, no, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> we we picked a uh, Gesundheit. That yes, one. sir. Yeah. So since you mentioned your wife, I must say, good job picking the movie. Oh yeah. No, she her taste is good. She requested Harvey Keitel. Oh yeah. No, I have to record this though. We All right. On, we were on a seventies uh, like bag for a long time. The ones I picked were like Lifeboat. <laughs> you know, by Hitchcock and uh, and shit like that. The listeners should know your wife. You told me off, Mike, that your wife requested. Yes, I Harvey Keitel. Yes, please. Can I have some Harvey Wife's Keitel? Name? Jennifer. Look, Jennifer, you did a good job. If it was up to Greg, it would be Hitchcock every damn day. There's no jobs in this town, are there? People need eyes without a face. You did a good thing. Say the goddamn words. I did a good thing. <laughs> You're not gonna die from your wounds. You're going to wish you were dead. You have no eyes in your face. But your father will make it right. Eyes without a face. At the Cineplex. Mm. What the fuck was Greg thinking? (laughs) To choose that goddamn movie. She did the right thing. Good for her. She's a good kid. That's the Harvey Keitel part. That was by request. Thank you very much. She's going to love it. Draft Kings, my friends. I play uh, fantasy football, Greg, do you? you I I don't. You're a baseball guy. I am. But if I did pick fantasy, are these the week by week ones? Yes. They're the best. You can win. I've won money that I will not disclose on this podcast. Otherwise, people will get angry at me. Warriors won serious money this past weekend. At DraftKings.com. This is America's favorite one-week fantasy football league. Uh, you got to check them out. I'm in three fantasy leagues that I'm stuck in, and my team sucks, and I'm middling around. And uh, Oh, I'm in one fantasy football league uh-huh. that's not as good as DraftKings. And uh, I just beat Robert Wall, Kevin Connolly, ah! and Governor Chris Christie back-to-back-to-back. Nice. To back to back. How weird is that? I love that you're all in the same league. How am I the least famous guy in my own fantasy yeah, that's league? that's fantastic. Ro- Chris Governor Christie. Christie. 
He's like, all right, let me lose. I'll pass gay marriage, but I'll lose at fantasy right, football. Right, right. Like, you know, that week bothered him. Yeah. Like a huge right, victory right. societally yeah. uh, for the state of New so Jersey. So is he a sentimental better? Does he always go with the New York teams? Or he? No, he goes Jersey. He took Ray Rice with his first right, pick because he right, went to Rutgers, course. New Brunswick, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah. New Brunswick, New Jersey. New Jersey Jeopardy we're yeah. playing. Uh, but DraftKings is great because you win uh, dough. Uh, DraftKings.com. This is the favorite one. There's a bunch of others, but this is the one you want to get in. You got to check it out. DraftKings takes watching football. It, it's like, it, it, I don't know if you've ever, of course you have, when you just have the blackjack table to yourself and your friends, mm. and you guys just, you act, like if you walk around Vegas at a seven, when you have that table to yourselves, everyone goes up, it goes to, ele- this one goes to 11. Yeah. You just, you go banana. I'm watching football because I'm going to win money. It's crazy. Yeah. DraftKings.com. One week. Fantasy football, no season-long commitment, no being stuck with the same players like that asshole Rob Gronkowski who's out with a fucking hurt forearm. There's guys that – Peyton Manning had bolts put in his neck yeah. and came back as Frankenstein's monster. Right. Uh, you know, if you know, if you and I had Peyton Manning surgery. They wouldn't let us go on rides at the <laughs> carnival. This guy's playing football at the NFL yeah, right, level. Right. Well, I'm, you know, I'm stuck with bad guys on my teams, but not a draft king because every week – you just switch them out. Instant cash, instant gratification. That's what we like. Instant gratification. True story. One guy uh, won a hundred grand his first time he played. Are you joking? Uh, no, a hundred thousand. This guy goes, "I'll give it a try." He listens to the podcast, more stories, and he tries DraftKings. Won a hundred thousand. How much do you have to invest to, to get a hundred grand? Well, here's the thing. Right now, <laughs> Moriers get up to six hundred dollars free. Use the promo code J. That's my name, J A Y. And for every dollar you deposit, DraftKings is going to match your first 600 bucks. That's 600 bucks totally free. Uh, this is just an incredible deal and a fun thing. This amazing offer will expire this Friday. Enter JAY today at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. And if you like it, use it because if enough of you guys use it and enter uh, my name, Jay, they will continue to sponsor. The podcast and maybe oh, how many right. guys do you get on a fantasy football team? Because I've done fantasy baseball teams, mm-hmm. but I don't think I've ever done a fan. I mean, I bet on football. But. Two, it depends on the league, but usually a quarterback, two oh. running backs, two wide receivers, and then like uh, one tight end, Merv Griffin, and then <laughs> you get uh, a defense and a special teams. So but some leagues you don't you get, get forty four guys or whatever. No, you get a team. Like you yeah, get yeah. A, a one a offense and one right, defense. Right, right, right. So if it, anybody gets hurt, there's no. You have to wait. That's the thing. Is if anybody gets hurt, you don't know when they're coming back. So you, right. know, you have to wait. Like he's questionable for week nine. Yeah, we'll see. I'll put him on my bench. But like with DraftKings, you go well. Fuck all. I'm just uh, new team. Right. Start over. Yeah. I'm going to draft Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I'm going to take this guy. That yeah, guy. That yeah, guy. Yeah. I'm going to take Ka- Ka- Kaepernick and Frank Gore, yeah. repping the Bay Area for my man Greg Pitts. <sighs> Frank Gore. Uh, are you going to show Valley of the Dolls at any that, of your uh, screenings? People have been asking for it, and I've talked about it. And I'm also thinking about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, which is an even wilder. Is that written by Roger Ebert? Yeah, that's the Roger Ebert one. And that yeah. one has and then he went on to, uh, every transgression in it that you can have in a movie, really. Then he went on to critique movies. Uh-huh. After writing what can be only considered a camp classic. Yes. Uh, it's a really – both of them are good. Beyond the Valley is a – has lines like, hey, what's been going on, man? Hey, I won heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Like shit like that in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. Could the bartender be Martin Borman? Do the screams of millions of innocents ring in his ears? You know, like, what's happening? Uh, the Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> my wife uh, will stomp on my head if we don't talk about Valley of the Dolls. Yes, if please. If you have not seen Valley of the Dolls, it is one of the most amazing. It's fantastic. And here's, I do a whole thing in my act, so I don't want you to think I'm bouncing bits off you. I have no <laughs> irony in me whatsoever. And my wife and I figured it out. The key to a happy marriage isn't similarities. Uh-huh. It's similar hates. Yeah. What you hate together. And yeah. we both hate irony. Yeah. Like when you see a guy walking around with a Neil Diamond t-shirt right, right, right. and he thinks it's funny because they, you know, yeah. or like a Journey shirt, like because yeah, they yeah, suck. Like, it. no, fucking Journey's awesome, you yeah. asshole. There's a fucking Filipino guy running around making mm-hmm. believe he's Steve Perry and they're still selling. They suck. You suck, you fucking yeah. jerk. Or like, look at his shirt I just brought back from Japan. They got the words all fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've right. never been to Japan. You're an asshole. Yeah. I wish I had that shirt. But the thing with Valley of the Dolls, I have no irony in my body. Yeah. And you on your podcast, uh, Smartest Man in the World, there's an app for it. Uh, I, it's my fa- – there's – I have Corolla, I have you, and I have yeah. me on my phone. That's it. And I only listen to myself to see how often I interrupt people and annoy them, and I've gotten better. <laughs> but with you, it's like rapid fire. It, it, there's, the synapses are firing so hard. And when people go like – this may – let me run this by you. 
when people go like, it's so bad, it's good. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's fucking good. No, it's good. We watch Showgirls 50 times because right. it's, look, I was in Pluto Nash. It's a pile yeah. of shit. Yeah. I sat halfway through it, left, and I've never seen it since because it was fucking garbage. Yeah. It, that's not so bad. It's good. But like, if Showgirls is on tonight when I go upstairs, yeah. I'm staying up. Yeah, you're going to watch it. I like it. Yeah. I want to watch Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. Uh, you see, you're a good fuck, baby. You're selling yourself short. <laughs> You know what we, I mean? We do what we do in Vegas. We gamble. Yeah. So I don't believe any of someone that. Someone offers someone a knuckle sandwich in the movie. Yeah. One of the dancers actually threatens someone with a knuckle sandwich. How'd you like a knuckle sandwich? Yep. Which I don't think was ever even in any movie. I think it's such a great thing to do. Three, it was in like uh, Three Stooges. Yeah, it's nothing, Stooges. In, nothing in color. No. And then Brian Posehn pointed out to me once that uh, – I believe Gina Gershon says darling twice in one sentence in one movie. He goes like, hey, darling, it's the thing, best cocaine in the world, darling. Like, there's too many darlings in a sentence. Like, you're overusing darling. So and you know it was spelled darling with an apostrophe, too. Of course. Uh, every time. Every of time. course. Like Lil with L-I-L apostrophe. Yeah, 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 Lil. Oh, little, it isn't Lil. Little, 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 shut up. S-H-A-D-D-U-P. <laughs> shut up. Do you think things are so bad they're good, or are you in my camp? And you can please disagree with me. Do you think things are – if something you like, it's so bad it's good? It, no, it's good. Like Valley of the Dolls is great. Valley of the Dolls is an amazing rendition of that book. I mean it's everything it needs to be. The only thing missing is at the end it's um, – uh, uh, what's her name? The actress who – she died of cancer, but she's in loads of movies. God Damn it, I'm forgetting her name. Not Rosalind Russell. Carol Channing. It's not Carol Channing. It's the woman at the end of they throw her wig in the toilet and everything, and she plays the critic. Ne- oh. It was supposed to be Judy Garland, and something fucking happened, and it wasn't oh. her. And that's the only thing that would have made it camper than it is, right? Uh, Patty Duke is great in everything. Are you there? I'm, I'm a big star. <laughs> it's me. It's Neil O'Hara. I need dolls to sparkle. <laughs> sparkle, Neil. Sparkle. Yeah, they, uh, she, they call pills dolls. Yeah, dolls. Which is great. Yeah, yeah. Which became immediately right into my lexicon. Oh, yeah, dolls. I've never called a pill a pill since. Oh, no, dolls. Got any dolls? Yeah. And you see them at, uh, what's his, Jonathan Adler has like candy dishes and cookie jars and they say dolls on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to drive the point yeah, home. Dolls. But I think it's a bad movie. Hmm. But I don't think it's so bad it's good. Like, I watch it. I get well, so Well, like, is Mommy much- Dearest so bad it's good? Or is Mommy Dearest just legitimately Amazing. entertaining? No, I think it's Because a, she's a, a, fucking no rocking the house. Boy? Yeah. yeah, it's just legit, legitimately good. I no, think. she's amazing in it. I never understood the camp of Mommy Dearest. Like, uh, when I would go see it, it would be yeah. filled with gays. Yeah. And they're yelling at the screen. Right, right. And laughing their balls off. And, I'm all, and I always thought it was, like, an actual yeah. good movie. <laughs> right, right. And when I watched, like, uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Yeah. There's no camp in that. Mm, it's, like, it's a guignol. That's a horror movie. And, yeah. And, and people will say, like, um, not Betty uh, Davis, the other one. Uh, Joan Crawford. They're like, she's so bad. I'm like, she's, it's she's the best. She's amazing, yeah. She's not a bad actor at all. She's a great actor. Uh, I'll defend Joan Crawford to the death. How did she find a hundred movies where she was a strong? I mean, she's weak in Baby Jane, but usually she's never the victim. Usually well, played, it's all yeah. shoulders, pads, and fucking... She's got a dick, basically, in every movie. <laughs> I remember watching TCM and they were showing uh, Mildred Pierce, which they did the remake of with Kate Winslet a couple years ago. But Alec Baldwin was hosting. And Alec Baldwin is so fucking heated up over the movie, right? Which I love, right? He's like, if we were hosting, it's just kind of sick, you know? And And he goes, Robert, this is Joan Crawford's 50th movie. She's already been a star for 20 years. Her 50th movie, and this is the one we all consider the pivotal movie, you know, like, and he, losing his shit over that she'd been in so many fucking, and she's not young in it. She's probably 50, you know? Is it true that in... And I just rap- saw that, and that's not so bad. It's good. It's actually really good. I, I, I'm with you. 100%. Mildred Pierce is amazing. I don't have room for irony. There's mm-hmm. too much. If it's bad, it's bad. Well, there's Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, you know what I mean? There's Spice World, and those That's, are just bad. Those are bad, but at least Sergeant Pepper's, I get to watch Aerosmith right. do, you know, yeah, Beatles. Coming, yeah, yeah. I, think, I do yeah, like that scene. I think horror movies, for me, the really, really bad ones are yeah. so bad, they're good. Re- but like, that makes them good. No, Like, it you're doesn't. ending it with good. Like, ch- like uh, Chucky? Like, it's so stupid. No, Chucky's good, though. Chucky is legitimately <laughs> good. But I'm, talk- I'm talking about, like, Michael those- Ebert. Yeah. Those, <laughs> Maddie Ebert, those ones that you that just you know make absolutely no sense, right? Where, uh, that are just they're they're great that, with good that, dialogue. Like, where the fuck are you, gun? Act- oh, but there was like, what's that movie now? The Room is it? What's the one? You know, the guy's written the book about it. He made it a couple years ago. It's like this terrible movie. It's really badly directed, poorly acted. 
Isn't it called The Room? What's it called? I don't know. It's like a famous cult movie from a few years ago. And now I see billboards for the guy who wrote a book about it and shit. And it's like, but that's actually bad. It's just bad. Yeah. But it's so astoundingly bad that people couldn't believe it got made kind of thing. Evil Dead. Evil you know, Dead. Like Bruce Campbell. I mean, Those are good, though. It is good, but it's so goofy and the acting is so absurd and all the dialogue is so absurd. Is it Jack and shit and Jack just left town? Yeah. I mean, there's a, it, I mean it, it's, Bruce it's Campbell, so bad though. that it's good. Bruce Campbell's so committed to those fucking parts. It's a, Bruce man. Campbell's He's, the best. Yeah, he is. Amazing. Valley of the Dolls is a... Let's make no mistake. It's a bad... It's a poorly... Oh, it, the pace casted. is led. Yeah, the acting is wooden. And you said in your podcast, like, it just reeks of barbiturates. Oh, and yeah. you played the Dionne Warwick theme song yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, like, as... It, it created its own world. Oh, yeah. Which no movie is able to do. Unless yeah. you're going to make Brazil. Right. Or like Raging yeah, Bull. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are like isolate or like, you know. the, the Well, Showgirl. Showgirls is a movie that there's nothing like it. It takes leave of all movie convention about like two I minutes like, in. I just like hitchhiking on the 15. Like it's totally yeah. normal. Oh, no. Everybody goes out of Baker. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the first scene where she's putting ketchup on her french fries and she's doing it furiously. <laughs> and that's two seconds into the movie. And you're like. We're already in another movie that's not a movie that's like a she's movie. She's very angry at the ketchup. She's furious. I think she's ketchup. also like kind of jacking it off. Oh, so much so. Yeah. Joe Esterhaas brings that light touch. <laughs> Subtle. You, why, if they were going to, my wife met the guy who wrote a book about uh, Valley of the Dolls and he wanted oh. to make the, he wanted to continue from the end yeah. when the girl's dragging the stick. Right. Along, because that's what happens when all your friends die yeah. and commit suicide. You, you go back to the countryside and you just touch leaves with a stick yeah, yeah, yeah. to a music voice. song. Bum, 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 but the guy bum, was like, bum, the guy was totally freaked out. Like, I don't know where to go because yeah. it it is so like that alone. It stands alone by itself. It, it really is. It's like you say. There's and I would put Brazil and and like you said in, in that category. There's a few movies that. They're not like a movie that's like a movie, a regular movie. Because you know what a regular movie is like. People get married and they cry and they die and the thing. Instead yeah. of everyone acting hyper weird the whole time. Or like a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. But it's the cool. Coen Brothers have a style of doing that. And I don't know that the Valley of the Dolls, I don't even know who directed fucking Valley of the Dolls. I don't either. You know what I mean? Like he's not a famous cult director. So. It's almost like an episode of Star Trek. Yes. If you were on Quaaludes. I w yeah. It's very I was bright. Say, if they'd all taken a lot of... Because they're all like this. At yes, some mother. Point in the movie. I'm doing my breast exercise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked on the phone <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> Who is that Sharon Tate? Sharon Tate, yeah. She's Who has the, the most enormous chest in the world. Oh, naturally. And she's on the phone with her mom in the movie. And uh, again, my wife, uh, the film Not and Buff, uh, you guys really should be married. Uh, she... Uh, <laughs> She pointed out to me that Sharon Tate leaves no room. You guys got to watch this movie and just check these things out that Greg and I are pinpointing. <laughs> in Valley of the Dolls, Sharon Tate's on the phone with her mother for about four minutes, yeah. and she never leaves room for the person on the other line to talk. She goes, hello? Yes, this is she. Good to see you, too. College is fine. Yeah. Everything's going great. I am doing my breast exercises. Yes, mother. And she just – it's, like yeah. it's like a soliloquy yeah. with no pauses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she hangs up the phone and goes, oh, screw it. Let him droop. Yeah, let him droop. That was her big, like, yeah. show her mother that was never really on the other line. Yeah. But no director goes – or no script supervisor yeah. goes, I think uh, – Breathe. Like, yeah, she should leave, like, a pause <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for the person Like you're pause. listening to the mother? It's no, it's amazing. like she's reading it off a TV dinner menu or something in front of her. What's best worst movie – I mean, that's the best worst movie of all time. In a lot of ways. I, right? I think it is. I mean, and it's it's wildly satisfying. Like I said, my favorite line, that little whore makes me feel 10 feet tall. <laughs> like, no one, even, no one's ever said that in real life. Like in Showgirls, when he says, uh, she says, uh, oh, you're Andrew Carver, the rock star. I like your music. He goes, I like your ass. Call me. And you're like, wow, that's never happened. I've never seen it happen. It's not happened. You said on your podcast, when they get reunited, Elizabeth Berkeley and uh, Kyle MacLachlan. Yeah. I like... I liked when you come, when you came. Yeah, I liked when you came. Like, there's dialogue, Joe Esther, like, just nobody ever says it. Mm -mm. This is all Greg Proops's, I'm paraphrasing what you've already said. But that was, it's true. There's so, Showgirls is Knuckles, nothing. Knuckles a whole sandwich. movie of lines no one's ever said. Knuckles I miss sandwich. you like I miss that something I've had cut off my twat or something. She says at one point. Did you mean twat? Doesn't she say that? Is she say twat? The, 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 yeah. I miss you like I missed a tumor I had cut off my twat or something. Yeah. And that's supposed to be funny and like. Well, I said that Because she's the comedian morning. in the movie, the one with the, the tits that well, bounce she, Yeah, there's always down. a wacky friend. Yeah, yeah. It's like Kimmy Gibbler on fam yeah. a Family, uh, or it's the one with the big tits. 
uh, Greg Proops, Smartest Man in the World <laughs> podcast. And last time you were here, we spoke a lot about uh, baseball. Yeah. And we went the other way this time. Yeah, we did. We and you never, you don't uh, have guests on your podcast. And the listener needs to know uh, look, I, I don't, I, this is what's great about a podcast. Anybody that comes to see you, when you tell them to go check something out, whether it's like a Gil, Gil Heron. Yeah, Gil Scott Heron. Gil Scott Heron, when he died, you yeah. soliloquy, you gave him the best um, obituate, obituate, barbituate, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, you were still on dolls. <laughs> you gave him the best obituary uh, live Smile, on stage. Smile, Jay. When it, yeah, and then when his <laughs> dolls make me sparkle. It's sparkle, Jay. And then when MCA died, I got to point this out. Uh, oh yeah. The I point of the one. podcast is we really are we're Jim Jones. Yeah. We're getting people to buy us part and parcel. So if I tell my listeners, if you get the greatest man in the world app on your phone and listen, and you can pick any episode, there's hundreds. It's the best. Oh, and you're that's what's so great. Kind. No, but I'm making a very salient point that yeah. you you will agree with. The everybody that goes to your podcast, when you tell them like, oh, you gotta go see X, Y, yeah, or Z yeah. or come see Eyes Without a Face. They go, well, I like what he likes. That's why I listen to the podcast. Right. Therefore, I'm going. So I'm telling these people listening to this podcast, you, there's only th- I'll show you my phone right now. There's only three <laughs> apps I have. I have Corolla because sometimes I'm on it. And then uh, you and my own to see uh, how many times I interrupt. Look who that handsome fellow is right there on oh, my telly. That's so sweet. Thank so you, uh, for any more stories, podcast people out there, if you want to add something to your rotation. The MCA you, one was a good one, but I felt strongly please, about that. I really please, felt like... As a parting shot, and I, I'll, we'll, we'll tap out on this okay. one, but it, let people know, because people go like, it's the Beastie Boys, a rapper died, whatever. And we all mourned it, because we all love the yeah. Beastie Boys, yeah. licensed to ill. But what you said about him... Please. Well, then he was a Buddhist, and that uh, I pointed out that other rap stars uh, uh, carried on singing about their cars and their guns and their gold and whatnot, and that he was absolutely the other way. They stopped being sexist after the second album, and they evolved as people, and that he became a film producer and film type, and they were doing a bunch of different projects. And if you ever saw their picture where they gave all their fans cameras, and that's the, the movie of their concert. They didn't have a big director shoot the movie or their concert. They gave like 35 fans cameras and they cut together all the footage of that. I mean, I, I just felt like they do something that we're always trying to do as podcasters, which is connect, connect to the crowd. And I think he did that more than anyone. And I think he had integrity and wasn't a sexist, drugged up dickhead, you know, like who was like, yeah, check it out. Uh, and you didn't put him in a rap category. You said right, you, he's got to go in rock. He is a rock star. Of course. Is present tense, yeah. uh, and you said name one rock star that improved themselves as they went on. Yeah, you, like you think as a Bre- person, you think Brett Michaels is going to sit with the fucking Dalai Lama Mm-mm. and, or and become actually, a Buddhist or care about enlightenment or anything and try like to save Tibet? Yeah, he's trying to paint his tour bus with, yeah. with skanks in it. Yeah, yeah, right. He's got he's got rock rock bus of love. What is it? That's rock it. of love or like remake this <laughs> bus of love. <laughs> No, Adam, Adam Yalsh was an interesting person. I mean, they're decidedly interesting people. But then what's his name? Adam Horowitz, the King Ad Rock. His father was the playwright Israel Horowitz, and, yeah. or is the playwright. So they, they come from a different atmosphere, but you can just tell by the references on their records and everything. I mean, no one else says I got mad hits like I was Rod Carew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sada Ara O on Paul's uh, Boutique. Yeah, like Sada Hara O. Uh... My man, I got more suits than Jacoby got mine. That is just, I got than JD's got Salinger's. I got more stories than JD's got Salinger. <laughs> I will. I think. I think Paul's boutique is the album God, Paul's in my life because yeah. I had it on cassette when I was doing a lot yeah, of yeah, road yeah. gigs. That's the single most listened to album in my entire life. Really, and almost by default because it's just yeah. On of the course, road. you just listen to it, a lot. and he just turns over and it just keeps going. And it was before like the CD it's, and the show. It's called Paul's boutique, and it's in Brooklyn. Pose with the Ask for Janice. Ask for Janice <laughs> to all the Brooklyn girls. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Pissing on the third rail. Doris the Finkasaurus. <laughs> the Finkasaurus. Amazing. It's like they're from another era, too. That was what I always thought was so funny. Looking down the barrel of a gun. Yeah. Son of a bitch getting paid, getting rich. Yeah, yeah. Five awesome. piece chicken dinner is that one on there? Yeah, yeah that's and right. then uh, I'm doing 120 driving over mailboxes. Yeah. Radar detector to tell me where the cops is. Yeah. 
That's when they really changed, wasn't it? This, that's the second well, they, album. They, I wonder how much it cost them to sample everything. That's the most sampled album. I was going to say that one really is like a museum piece. It's. Like, it's I remember when it came they out. They sampled Abbey Road. It. Yeah, that we were, we were talking about how they circle. collated this fucking album. You know, holy like, shit! Wow. Talk about full circle. Yeah, they, they do. They, 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 they do. They, do, 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 yeah, do, 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 do. they sample Abbey Road. Yeah, yeah. And just a uh, the the newscaster from New York. It's a trip. It's yeah. got a funky beat, and yeah. I can bug out to it. <laughs> they sampled the whole thing. Yeah, it must have cost them a fortune. It was I a know, big right? fu to capital. Do, do you? Do they ever have to pay Jerry Lewis? You think for the Hey Ladies riff? Because they never use his voice. I don't think in it. But they probably totally not. are doing Jerry Lewis every yeah. two seconds. I well, if Jerry Lewis uh, probably is still fighting to this day. Ah! To if we know anything about Jerry Lewis. October 27th is my date of birth. I went to the party, you know, and I did the Smurf. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> Just old school. They kept it real. They kept it fun. And it was always the same rhyme scheme. That's what I loved. A, yeah. B, A, B. Yeah. A, B, yeah, yeah, A, no, B. Yeah, yeah. None A, of that B. complex shit, man. No, it's don't 1986, get yeah. And it's just fun. Yeah, always It kept fun. the fun in hip-hop. Yeah. Uh, Greg Proop, Smartest right, Man brothers. in the World podcast. And, of course, you are putting... This episode of More Stories with the great Greg Proops is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature for a free audiobook, free audiobook of your choice and a 30-day trial, go to audiblepodcast.com slash J. I just read Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian, and I got my free download from audiblepodcast.com slash J. You do it too. Every dollar counts when you're running a small business. You can't just throw money away, but that's exactly what you're doing. If you're leasing one of those expensive postage meters, don't do it. Long-term commitments, maintenance, and reset fees. Expensive ink. It's crazy. I know better way for you to do your mailing and shipping use stamps.com with stamps.com get all the benefits of a postage meter and more at a fraction of the cost just use your own computer and printer to get official u.s postage for any envelope any package any class of mail plus no more time consuming trips to the post office everything you would do at the post office do from your desk with stamps.com i use stamps.com for more stories and I want you to use it too right now use my last name mohr more for this special offer it's a no risk trial Plus a $110 bonus offer. That includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com right now before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in more, M-O-H-R. That's Stamps.com. Enter more. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you want to battle with either that you will say you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Watch your arm. Why is this one pleasure? In in a dank cave with scurvy. Yeah. That's still the sublime. Rats gnawing at you. It's so much fun, your podcast. Well, thank you. And I'm amazed. You, I said it off mic, but I'll say it on mic. You impressed the heck out of me because I don't know many comics that can go to like Edinburgh, Oslo, and then like just take it home to West Hollywood across from the pleasure chest. And like, no matter where you are, you draw this crowd of people that are complete diehard you know, smartest man in the world podcast fans. And anybody listening, there's an app. There's a smartest man in the world podcast app. And I'm telling you, it, it is so much fun. The ranch you go on, you ramble. It's like a river with many bends. You always circle oh, yeah. back around. I love it. And I get – and here, here – okay, this will probably be – this is the biggest compliment I could give for my personal uh, ego to you to go share. On. I'm ready to accept a compliment. I actually – and I'm, this is not bullshit. I'm actually smarter after I listen to your podcast because you're – I'm being serious. Because of your references and your, your knowledge of history and stuff. But it's all completely funny and goofy all the time. Yeah. And But then you get super heavy and like yeah. you, you'll read like poetry on stage <laughs> and you broke down like the Fourth Amendment and people's rights and stuff right. uh, to attract your right wing faithful. <laughs> Uh, so if you're out there listening and then we're going to get to Mr. Proops in about five seconds, uh, which Amazon banner you should use, uh, it's your life. Use whichever one you want, but I will say this and Proops, you'll like this. I worked out a deal. This is for the listeners, a little special announcement. If you use all the money from my, uh, Amazon kickback that I get, uh, you go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, buy whatever you want, email me what you bought, and then I will read your, uh, purchase on the air with a lovely guest. I, it all goes to my son's college fund. Oh, fantastic. So some of the guys might want to buy a mobile. Blanche, you are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man.
Oh, my friends, we're well into the 200s on more stories. Don't forget to click that Amazon ad. Greg Proops in the house. Get close to the mic, sweetheart. Hello, everybody. You can pull your chair closer. That I way. will. I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lunge for a while, though. I'm going to Ziggy Sardust this for the first few minutes. I like that. Yeah. I, that's a hipper reference. I was going to do the guy at the end of uh, Price is Right that leans all the way forward to go, one dollar. Yeah. yeah. When he knows he's got a nail. Yeah. Lower. <laughs> Uh, if you want to, uh, a lot, I get a lot of tweets from people saying like, Hey, should I use this guy's Amazon banner or your Amazon banner? And I never, uh, I just don't answer cause I'm not going to tell people where to go because we're all podcast brethren. Greg Proops, of course, we smartest are. man in the world podcast, which I listened to extensively on my Hawaiian vacation. That's very gratifying, Jay. Laying in the sun, listening to you in Oslo. Oslo. Oh my God. It and is then, Oslo. I keep saying Oslo, but it's Oslo, I believe. And uh, I said to my wife, listening to uh, the smartest man in the world po- podcast, laying on the beach in Honolulu, is life's most sublime pleasure. <laughs> to which she replied, listening to it in a dank fucking cave with scurvy would be one of life's. <laughs> I got to remember that. Yeah. I'm using that on my next show. I do. Please say, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay said, laying in the sun in Hawaii. Motorcycle? Mm-hmm. Or a Vespa? I'm actually putting it to a kid's education so that that helps sway your decision as to whose banner to use. Know that you might be putting a kid through college. That's a very noble endeavor. Uh, no, yeah, but also I get to, it's also selfish. I get to keep money for myself to go to Hawaii. We're, that's why we're advertising on the shows because we don't make any money doing these things. No, we don't. No. We need you to buy things for yourself. Check this guy out. Uh, Kevin Blanchard. Yeah, you, buddy. Kevin Blanchard. Hey, Jay Moores. It's always a little Tracy Morgan in there. They always love it. Hey, Jay Moores. I love the podcast. You make my Mondays better. Uh, Unfortunately, I've been spending months forgetting about your Amazon banner at jaymore.com, even as I buy all kinds of shit with my Amazon Prime membership. Sorry about that. But today, I finally remembered and made some purchases. I got a set of Panasonic headphones for my niece's 10th birthday so she doesn't drive my sister nuts playing Minecraft all damn day. Language. I also got some replacement razor heads for my body shaver to keep my junk trimmed so my girlfriend will keep going down on me. That's a lot of information. Yeah, I don't know if you want to mix a uh, 10-year-old niece no. and girl. <laughs> I'd separate that with a paragraph. Something, yeah. Something on a, or, yeah. Yeah. On a side note, yeah, I yeah. also purchased yeah. P.S. a pa- yeah, P. Oh, by <laughs> the way, if you're so inclined to yeah. read this as well, yeah. Panasonic headphones, uh, no, sorry, uh, replacement razor heads for my body shaver to keep my junk trimmed so my girlfriend would keep going down on me. Felt good to finally contribute. I bet. Felt good to finally contribute a little something to my favorite podcast. Keep the laughs coming, bro. Put your name on it. Uh, Sounds like everybody was giving. Everybody. Does it really ma- Do you have to be... You're a happily married man like myself. Do you have to uh, have a certain... Do you no. have to edge along the driveway in order to get uh, carnal pleasure well, from your bride? I do simple courtesy, but it's not a big event in my life or anything. I don't light a candle and lay in the tub or anything. <laughs> You know, smother myself with emollients and read from a book out loud. Myrrh. Air a lot of myrrh. Yeah, a lot of myrrh in the air. <laughs> in the <laughs> Intoxicating. Yeah. You're <laughs> no, like, I don't. I don't. Do I smell myrrh? Oh, Greg, you've done it again. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I didn't, yeah. I don't know about the shaving thing. I, I'm, I'm a little old to do that, I think. I you think get to you that need... Ron Jeremy level of age and there's too much pooching. <laughs> do you, once I shaved completely... Really? And it looked it looked almost exactly like a rubber chicken. Yeah, right. It's and it was disc- it was it was horrible. It yeah. only looks good on like porno guys right. with eight, with eighteen packs. Yeah, yeah. Who are built just for that? Right, right, right. But I for Kevin Blanchard, maybe uh, if you have to trim in order for your girlfriend to do that, maybe uh, you know I'm not going to say anything. But no, no, you got to do what you have to do. Oh, you know what? Fair, look at see. That's why you got to listen to Smartest Man in the World podcast. Do what you have to do. If that's what it's going to take. You got to trim a little bit, though, right? I do. You, you, you don't do just you don't just let it go. I right? use the same scissors uh, to trim my <laughs> oh, pubes no. as I do to cut chicken and uh, cut uh, dog shit out of the back of my dog's such a coincidence ass hair. And I just yeah. wash the scissors and I put them back in the rack because I'm a savage beast. <laughs> Uh, so that's you, Kevin Blanchard. You're, uh, you're more stories famous and thank you, brother. And anybody out there, if you're wondering which one should I use? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to put a kid through uh, college. That would be good. You know what we should tell this guy? Forget the razor trimmer. If you really want the best shave of your life, let me tell you this, Greg Proops. Yes. I will never endorse something I don't personally use. I've turned down, uh, several, several dollar shave 